book of Sirach, otherwise known as Ecclesiasticus, the 36th chapter, 11th verse. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. Wow. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you go into the book of Genesis, the first chapter, it speaks of well, the first verses. It speaks of God creating the heavens and the earth. And we understand this thing of ours that God is not speaking of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, but specifically is, is speaking of the, as we say in the Hebrew, Allah Hayim, which means powers. And the powers, they were the angels, but they were, they were also the elect of the nation of Israel. And we were and are the spirit, <clears throat> as I said, and we were, and we are the first spirits to be created in the universe. And it was us who was tasked with the job of fashioning and fabricating the different elements, physics and creation itself. Not only for the earth or planet earth, but the entirety of the universe. And the head architect is our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. He and we are creators of all things. Verse 12. O oh Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. And why are we the firstborn? Well, because we're the first fruits. Out of all of the grapes that are in the vineyard, we are, we are the chief of the fruit. We are the best of the increase. And as it was just noted and mentioned, we were the first spirits created, making us the firstborn. Yahweh Shah being the firstborn of all creatures because he was the very first spirit to be created. And this is um this is the identity of the initiated. Giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations to you, Achim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. In continuation, O oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. And when he speaks about the mercy falling upon Jerusalem, it's not speaking of terrain. It's not speaking of the geographic setup of what you call today Jerusalem. It's speaking of the people of Jerusalem. Remember, it was David who was an Israelite who named the city Jerusalem, which Jerusalem in the Hebrew is Yashar Shalom, or some would say Yashalom, Yashalom, which means. <coughs> Teaching of peace. And we are the ones who are the teachers and, and the instructors of peace. <clears throat> Feel Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Amen. And this 
what we are witnessing is the gathering of the elect. This is the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, in the first verse. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, on Yaquab, and will yet choose Israel. So even with all of the sins and the malicious, malignant conduct that we have exercise on this earth and the fornication and the adultery and the idolatry and the covetousness and the um, lasciviousness and the hypocrisy even with all this being exercised and conducted by our, our us ourselves we the nation of Israel even at that, we are still his chosen. And despite what we have done, he will not forsake us, nor leave us unnourished. Scripture says, with a, with a suckling woman, will she, will she forsake the child who is in need of milk? It's, the scripture said, yeah, she may do it, but the Lord won't. He's not going to forsake Israel. And we are going to be redeemed in its season. It says, and we'll set them in their own land. And that own land is Jerusalem. Their own land is the Fertile Crescent, the Levant. The Lord, Yahweh, is going to bring us back into that land. All right, we're not going to get on airplanes and not going to get on boats. You know, no, we're going to be brought back via what the world calls UFOs, right? We understand them to be the chariot to the Most High. And this thing of ours, we call them Marukabath. All right. The the Marakabath, which essentially what they are are great millstones, flying great millstones. <clears throat> and I um I don't use that term loosely. That's actually the definition of um. That's 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 the, the Hebraic definition of what they are. They're noted to be the, the the word there also is millstone, and they they indeed are great. They're they're huge rocks or crystals. Or made, they're made of intergalactic precious metals, and when they come, and if if you come into the opposition with them, they will grind you in the powder. Or may I say, rather zap you in the powder. It's the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> In continuation, it says, And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the strangers, speaking of, are the other components of the nation of Israel, the elect from the four corners of the earth, and we'll get it, but that's what it is. Of course, we'll bring forth precepts to bring forth edification. Verse two, and the people shall take them and bring them in their place. And we're going to take who? We're going to take the heathen nations. We're going to take the Anashim. Pardon me. We're going to take the um, Ayapium. We're going to take those who've risen up against us and possessed us and hurt us and harmed us and destroyed us. And so we're going to take these guys 
these are the other nations, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. So they're going into slavery. Same way we were looked down upon and thrown on cargo slave ships and yeah, it's, it's time for our enemies to uh, to get a taste. It's time for our enemies to go into slavery. That's just what we have come at. That's just the time period in which we have come into. It's a time for everything, as it seems. It was a time for Rome. It was a time for Greece. It was time for the Achaemenids. It was a time for the, the, the for the Zidonians and the Sodomites, and it was a time for America. It was a time for Russia. It was a time for NATO. It was a time for EU. And there is also a time for Israel. And this time is a world without end. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. This hasn't come to pass yet, but it will. This is the book of Matthews, the 15th chapter, in the 24th verse. But he answered and said, and who is this? This is Yahweh Shah speaking. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the, the gathering is, is pertaining to the elect. And the elect is pertaining unto the nation of Israel. That's just who we are. And that's just who you not. Can the dog complain that it barks and it wags its tail? Nay, it can't. It was born for that purpose and we were born for ours. So you heathens can't be upset at the fact that we're going to win and you're going to lose. Because ultimately, through our victory comes your preservation. Because this man Esau, the so-called white man, in his power structure, he doesn't plan for you guys to be able to eat organic food and eat organic fruits. He doesn't plan for you guys to be able to have wives and marry and have children. This man, Esau, is trying to destroy the earth. He wants to depopulate everybody to under, to 500 million, and he wants to put a karagma inside of everybody's hand. Is that the life that you heathens want? I, yeah, you're going into slavery on us, but through going into slavery on us is your salvation. If it wasn't for us, you heathens would be exterminated by the so-called white man. If it wasn't for us stepping up to the plate, if it wasn't for the for the return of, of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, it would be none of you left. Well, let's get, matter of fact, let's get that. I'm going to read this again. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus, Yahweh Shai, he said himself, he's not, he was only sent to the, the Israelites, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That I want to get. I'm gonna grab um. Let's go to Matthew's the twenty fourth chapter. Wow, then we're close, man. We're very close to the end. We're very close to the end. We're months away 
small things being made new. This is the book of St. Matthews, the 24th chapter. In the 31st verse. And he shall send his angels. And with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. And so the angels are going to gather the elect and what the world calls UFOs. But we understand them to be the Marokabath. We understand them to be the millstones of the most high. And we understand who is going on those millstones. Or may I say, because the apostle Tahar speaks of one big, great, one big chariot. Well, we understand who's going on that great millstone then. I said in that format. And it said that we will be gathered from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And it said who was going to be gathered. Well, it said that the elect. Well, who is the elect? You know, people may ask, you know what? Well, you know, I thought that was just the believers. Well, no, you're right. It is just the believers. And you other heathens don't believe. It's the believers of the nation of Israel. That's what it is. That's who we are. This is the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, and we're going to prove it. We'll prove it. Verse 5, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake. So who is the servant of the Most High? Who's the servant of Yahweh? Is it not Jacob? Is it not na the nation of Jacob? The descendants of Jacob? <clears throat> it says, and Israel mine elect. So the Israelites are the elect. Now all Israelites are not going to be saved. A lot of Israelites are going to die and be destroyed because they were rebellious and disobedient. And they didn't repent. They did what they wanted to do, and they followed the ways of the heathen, and they went out and they got that charagma, and so they lose. But there's a remnant. There is a, um, a garden within the garden. And those are the elect. It says, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed me. It said we were surnamed by the Heavenly Father. We were because we, why? Because we are the sons of God. And the heathens would never understand it. They would never understand this concept. It says, though thou hast not known me. Right, because we haven't known the Heavenly Father. We've been put in a position where we discontinue from our heritage. But now we're coming back to our culture and our identity and our history and our, our memorial. We're reflecting on our memorial and we're living by the code. It says, though thou hast not known me, Verse five, I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. And our people don't consider, they, you know, they don't understand. You know, our people believe in Jesus. They believe in Allah. They don't understand that there's no God beside Yahweh. They, they fail to realize that before Daniel went into that lion's den, he told those satraps and those bastards, he told them, that Shema Yasha'Allah Yahweh. He, he told him, he told him Yahweh was a chad. He told him, he told him, Alanaya, pardon me, Alahaya, Alahaya Yah, 
or Allah Hayawa Akhad. That he told him that his God was one Lord. And they didn't believe it. They didn't consider it. They didn't know that the Lord Yahweh was going to deliver him from the mouth of lions. But he did. And instead of Daniel being in the belly of lions, now he rests in the palace or near the palace of ancient Susa in the modern Iran. And he died of a good old age. And he fulfilled his lot. And he came back. In reincarnation to fulfill the same. And in this thing of ours, those of us who are initiated, we know who Daniel is. It's, it's been revealed. And we um we are we are grateful to continue in his legacy and and to prophesy before his presence. We truly are. We truly are. <clears throat> it says, I am Yahweh and there is none else. Now, remember we spoke about the four winds. The four corners of the earth, right? Let's let's finish it off of Isaiah the eleventh chapter. Mmm. Mmm. And it, I love how it says the restored remnant. I love that. Verse eleven. I, I'm going. I'm starting at verse eleven. It says, "And who is that restored? Wait, what? Who is restored? Wait, who was? Wait a minute. Who was the guys from back in the day? Was it not us?" Was it not Abraham? Was it not Isaac? Was it not Jacob? Was it not Moses? Was it not the children of Israel who conquered the Philistines and took off the head of Goliath? Was it not was it not our, our forefathers who were who were the ones who walked through the Red Red Sea as it was split and Pharaoh and his and his hosts is now arche, archaeological remnants and, and, and residue in the midst of 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 Aqaba and then the Red Sea. Was it are we not the are we not the ones who gave y'all this? All you guys talking about monotheism, this and that, and you believe in God? Were we were we not the ones who gave you the Torah? Was it not our forefathers Moses, who was an Israelite from the tribe of Levi? Did he not go on that mount? Did we not give you guys civilization? Did we not give you guys a, a civilized conduct? Not to commit adultery, fornication, idolatry? Which all of you heathen still do till this day. Were we not the ones from the beginning? Was, was it not the Israelites? Were we not the ones who gave you Genesis, Exodus? Were we not the ones who gave you the book of Revelation? Were we not the ones who wrote the entire Bible? Yet, they never give us credit. I don't see anybody reading any ancient Chinese texts. I don't see anybody reading any ancient East Indian texts. See, the Bible is the, the greatest and the best soul and the most known script and text of all time. I wonder why. I wonder why. But these, these heathens, they, they don't look, they don't take us serious. And, it, and it's okay because I refer them to Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, if they're literate, go read it. It's okay because we do indeed refer you to wisdom and asylum in the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse, to reflect upon your thoughts. To sober you up. <clears throat> this is Isaiah, the 11th chapter, in the 11th verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Did he not set his hand in Egypt to, to, to save his people? Is he not going to set his hand now in America and all the land masters which, which we are scattered in to save and deliver us? Showing you that it's not talking about you other nations. The second time of who? The second time for, for the Israelites. 
He says, the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, which of course is Ethiopia. Pathros is a uh, is an area in the, in the um, Middle East. Uh, I believe, no, I, I think Pathros is, it might be North Egypt, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that vicinity, actually. But of course, Syria is in the Levant region. And from Elam, which Elam is speaking of in India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. And from Shinar, which Shinar is speaking of Iraq. And from Hamath. And from the islands of the sea. Because the Israelites are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. I actually want to look up Pathos real quick. Make sure I'm right on my geography. Pathos, region of the south, a part of Egypt and the home. Pardon me. A part of Egypt and the home country of Path Pathrosim people, probably located in Upper Egypt. Right. So, yeah, that's northern. I believe that's... Well, uh, I believe the way they actually geographically is situated. When it says we're located, located in Upper Egypt, I, because I know is they base it upon the flow of the Nile River. I'm trying to see is Upper Egypt... It says Pathos region of the south. Um, let me see. Is Pathros southern Egypt? Or, uh, uh, I I think it's northern Egypt. Let me see here. I think it's northern Egypt. All right, um, uh, I'll be, let me see, Path Rose, Path Rose, um, on map. Shalaki, I just such a nah. Yep, Upper Egypt is South Egypt. I'm sorry. Yep, just making sure. So it's it's actually I get confused by because the thing is Egypt is they measure Upper and Lower Egypt based upon the flow of the Nile River. The Nile River flows from the south. Um, so the, 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 the hydro components of the Nile is actually energized and it, the flow comes from the South and it enters and spills into the, um, Mediterranean, the Great Sea. Um, so technically like Southern Egypt, so Pathos would be Southern Egypt. And that's interesting because you had Israelite forts and, um, strongholds. That's that were in southern Egypt that serves as deterrence in the buffer zone for the um, Persians. You had Israelites living in the south of Egypt, where you consider today like the Sudan and lived in communities that were like warlike communities that served as a um, military buffer zone um, for the Achaemenids against the uh, the different. African tribes, the the Nubians, and things of that nature. It's probably the, what the twenty seventh eighth dynasty of Nubia, twenty ninth dynasty of Nubia, would be at that time period with the Persians. I actually want to look that. Up. Let me stop. I'm I'm, I'm doing a lesson. I end up. Looking up this and looking up that, and it'll be an hour long lesson. So let's go back. Um, we're almost done. Um, so it says from Egypt and from Pathros, which is when it says Egypt is talking about the Egypt of the northern Egypt, which is like you know, lower Egypt, because you had Israelites in Alexandria. The Alexandrian Jews. That's why Yahweh Shai went to Egypt. Because not because his skin blend in. Well, you have to remember 
at that time period, you had Ro- you had Persians, you had Romans, you had um you had Greeks. The Greeks had civilization in Egypt for hundreds of years at that point. So Egypt was not just blackly black. It wasn't just a bunch of black people in Egypt at this time period. E- Egypt um was a especially northern Egypt, it was a diverse um landmass. It was like a like one of the modern cities you'll see in America, like an Atlanta, you know, or like a you know, like a New York. It had all types of different people. The reason why he went to Egypt not to blend in with his skin color because you had people of different skin color in Egypt. You had people of different skin color in Europe. You had people of different skin color in the Middle East. It was because that there was a large Israelite population um, and society in Egypt. And Egypt just was, Egypt bordered Israel and where he was at. It was close. It would have been a lot more difficult for, difficult geographically to climb and, and go to other places other than Egypt. Egypt borders Israel. So I did, did want to mention that sometimes a lot of people, they on a, on a black tip, well, why did, why did he go to Egypt? Because the black, the black, the black, black, all the black, all the black, 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 black. No, he went to Egypt because there was an Alexandrian um, community in Egypt, which was millions of Israelites lived in Egypt. Not because of his, not because of skin color. This is very base type of thinking. You got That's not the strategic. Oh, we got to blend in with the skin color. The the world was set up very differently than that at that time period. This is after this is after the Greeks, after the Romans. The Edomites were everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't just a bunch of black people in Africa. But anyway. And Edomites have been in Africa. You know. You remember, Esau married the African wife. He he married a Canaanite. But anyway. And now, of course, it's, I'm not taking away from the fact the so-called white men are the Edomites. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. We we understand that. I was just making the point for why the Lord went into Egypt and it was it was prophecy that he would go into Egypt. I'm just I'm disputing the the notion that he did it just because he was trying to blend in with dark skin. That that that's a that's a old, you know, saying try to try to, you know, show the people of 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 the Bible are black. We don't need to do that. We know that the prophets and the Israelites are black. And you got Israelites that came in different colors the same way they do now. Big deal. The so-called white men and the other nations are going to slavery. That's what it is. And the Israelites, of course, now look, and this is how we know because guess what? We're, the Lord's going to gather the Israelites from all these different places. So they're not going to all look black. They're not going to all look the same color or the, even have the same facial features. You're going to have Israelites, like the Israelites in Niger, the people of, of Ni- Niger in Nigeria, those are Israelites, but they don't look like Israelites from Argentina in Venezuela. So it's not about the skin color. It's about if you descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, I'm going to continue to read, and, I'm, and this is it. It says, <clears throat> the point being, it says, in Elam, and from China, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. So we're scattered, and we're in Japan, the, the ethnic samurai, the early uh, of the Edo period, though the samurais were Israelites. All right, those were Israelite um, people that migrated into the landmass of um, what you call Japan. All right, there's archaeologists that spoken of the different fe- facial features that the samurai class had. It was different from the actual Japanese population. So, but and you got iconoclasm too. I I just went to a a samurai exhibit in the high museum. You could see where they they painted the the skin on a lot of the portraits um lighter you can saw you can see the the certain parts of the paint not fully set like they didn't completely paint everything right and a lot of times the in they in the culture they used to uh, lighten up their skin with makeup too so you got Israelites doing all different type of things they were worshiping Buddhism the samurai they was doing all type of wickedness so what the Lord destroyed and scattered us for that 
but he's going to he's going to rectify and reinstitute us on this earth. All right. He's going to reinstitute us. All right. It's, it says, um, <clears throat> it says, and this is the point in verse 12. It says, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. See, these are all talking about Israelites, the Lord's people. It's not talking about oh, actual Egyptians, actual Cushites, actual people of Syrians. No, it's talking about people who were scattered, as we read in the book of Matthew, to the four corners. All right. The outcasts of Israel. All right. It says. Um, oh, perfect. Just like it. Um, but um, outcasts of Israel showing you is talking about Israelites. Our beloved nation, it says, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All right. So the Lord is going to gather his people and he's going to satiate us in the landmass of Israel. All right. As he took us out of Egypt those three thousand years ago. So that giving all praises, honor, glory and worship to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Once again, dub honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutation to you, Akim. Shalom, keep the faith.